but you attribute like I guess Waterloo to being like the birthplace of this whole ecosystem. I just want I just want to have that on the record for people to know as well because a lot of people you know, well, so much is in the it, states, but like it came from Canada. Of, yeah, a lot of companies in Toronto, um, Aon, um, you know, Polymath, a lot of those companies like they they were heavily involved and kicked off and helped facilitate the ICO um, boom. Now I'm not saying that was a great thing, um, but it did get a lot of media attention. It got a lot of new eyes in the space. A lot of people leaving their day jobs to come over and work here because it was slightly. You know, like confirmed that yes, this is a solid career to go into. Um, and so when we go to conferences, you know, whether it's LA, like abroad in, in the Caribbean, or like if you were in New York or Chicago, and people would be like, you'd be like, where are you from? Like Toronto, like, what the hell's with you? There's like 15 of you guys here. Um, and then after a while, some places like, it's like you're the Canadian crypto mafia or something. There's, there's like a whole bunch of you guys going all over the place. Uh, but there was, it was just a hotbed of, of like just talent, whether it be Devs, Amir Rosic, and, and uh, Vitalik's dad, Dimitri. Had um, they had Block Geeks, which was like a Y Combinator and, and a launch pad for, for blockchain companies. So they were able to facilitate tons of that. Then we had Hut 8, which was like one of the biggest miners in all of Canada. And they were making a mint back in the day when it was booming. Um, they had huge offices downtown Toronto, right near the banking district. Um, they hired tons of blockchain companies to go in there with them. They had like this crazy, like 20 little weed, like startup um, incubator going on right beside the banking system um, in Canada. And like all that stuff, like they stood up. Um, they were there, they made their mark was, and all those people have gone on to do like fantastic things and build in the space to make like the tools we use easier, um, to make our lives easier to get in and out of crypto, um, and understand and see analytics behind it. Um, so like, I don't know, everyone I've known in the space for say a five to six year period at some point in time, investing isn't enough and they want to start making the impact and usually they get involved and either start building, you know, start, a, you know, do a startup or, you know, they're finding holes in the system and they want to fix them. And so I just, I appreciate seeing that because people, you know, they do truly want the best for the space. Absolutely. No, very well said. Um, and I think, you know, it's all, it's very difficult not to, once you're in the space, like you've invested a bit or you've researched enough, it's almost difficult not to want to be involved because it's, if you understand it, you really do see the future in all of this and how important this is going to be to the future of this whole space, the whole Web3 space uh, as a whole. So, I mean, it's very encouraging, um, you know, once you're in, you're in almost. Uh, and I do think that there's a big push of, I mean, as we've seen, Canadians in the space really making a difference. And uh, I, I do want to move it not away from Canada totally, but, you know, uh, into a more broad conversation. But do you think there's any reasons in terms of regulation or, um, you know, as we're seeing things like, you know, the states trying to go back and forth with the Senate, I know the bill didn't go through, but, um, you know, there is a lot of conversation right now about regulation, especially in the realm of NFTs. How do you respond to that, especially being, you know, I have a bunch of Bitcoin and ETH. We don't talk about how much we have, but I know uh, you've been in the space longer and probably have a lot more. So uh, how do you um, respond to, I guess, the the regulation conversation that's currently taking place? Uh, yeah. Um, so I guess being in Canada, it's a little bit different. It always has been. Um, back in when FinCEN put regulations in, Canada followed suit maybe three years later, very loosely with like non-specific um, cut and dry um, verbiage in, in like the tax forms. Um, so Canada has kind of just been sitting back and waiting for things, whereas the states have been more aggressive and been like, before they they self-regulate, we're going to dictate. Um, I don't know, like, uh, personally, I think you should see where the industry goes and not stifle innovation, um, as long as it's not rampant with fraud. Um, and right now, I mean, other than some wash trading that was going on back in the day on Rarible, I, I can believe me, I spend a lot of time on this, and there's been a lot of groups who monitor this stuff. I don't think this industry is something to worry about at this at this point in time. Um, the traditional art space is other things very well maybe, right. uh, but this space is. Um, I know I know it's very threatening to, to the status quo, but it doesn't mean that we're less safe. If anything, we're fifty thousand times uh, more transparent um, and and more efficient. Um, so, I, I guess um, I I am in a lot of groups where there are some some like you know high paid lawyers in the crypto space. I'm working specifically in the United States and the Caribbean. Um, so I try and keep my ear on what's happening globally uh, because I'm not, you know, just going to be, um, I guess, having to abide by Canadian law. Um, I don't know where I'm going to settle in the world right. um, over the coming years. So I, I need to kind of find, and, and that's the thing, I'm going to vie where the governments there are, are open and have a, 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 you know, a solid future mind, um, not no archaic mustache peats who, who don't understand. So just say no. Um, so I myself am going to, you know, look for the countries where I'm welcome. Um, who are doing blockchain initiative things, um, who have, you know, hackathons for the younger generation coming through. So they're not like a, a, a populace of dense people in the space, because um, that's going to be something that you do not want to live in that area. Um, and I'm just trying to position myself for five years out again, like I like to do. Um, and typically, um, that is whether it be, you know, Switzerland, um, whether it be Bahamas, um, or, you know, right now, Florida, um, or somewhere like that. That's those are the places that I'm looking. Um, 
regulation does change drastically. Now, once you get to a certain point and it's heavily invested in by lobbyist groups, banks, um, you know, major VC firms, it's not going anywhere at that point. Um, no matter what the government wants, lobbyists will turn against them and lobby, you know, for the reverse thing they were four years prior. Um, so I think we're coming to that point very soon. Ethereum has been deemed a non-security, so there's really no regulatory issues there. Bitcoin has already, you know, passed the test, the Howie the we test. Um, so I don't believe those two coins have to worry about things. Um, we've seen EOS and other ones get their hands slapped, um, you know, and Telegram got, you know, had to get their four billion back. So it's not like they're they're hands off. Um, now with art, the only the only I guess distracting thing is art has, in traditional space has been rampant with fraud. Um, so they're assuming it's carrying over. Now if they understood the blockchain, they'd have to you know they'd have to realize there's no worry. It's like a transparent ledger. That's a dream come true to to curb that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so I mean, there's nothing to worry about. If anything, you've just curbed like the biggest problem in the traditional space. Plus, you've made it cheaper, faster, and and you know, like a, a, to the world on in the top of the dime as long as you have the internet. Um, so uh, once they realize, um, if they were smart, instead of going against it and just dis- trying to discount it and arguing against it, you should position yourself and learn more about it. So you're one of the first in the space that can migrate and convert people over there. Um, and then you have a long, long successful career in the space because it's going to be decades before the masses, you know, fully understand and everyone's come over. Um, so if you, as yourself, as a traditional person right now, instead of being discouraged and angry and upset that, that you're irrelevant, um, you aren't irrelevant yet. You have you know probably five to ten years to do not become that person um and in that five to ten years you can be a leader bringing people into that space so you're someone who's at the forefront of it um, and that's where the people should be looking instead of being upset or discouraged about it absolutely no and, and i mean the bigger the company or the bigger the organization governments being at the top of that list governments and banks uh the more difficult it is to get that through unfortunately you know i've had the pleasure of working with some like really large companies now in the space like who are trying to adopt this and you know they they it's the same conversations what you brought up it's that they're asking about kyc they're asking about like how they can collect data and i said well you know what you're lucky it's on a public ledger and they told you exactly what data they're comfortable giving away by what's on their profile <laughs> so you know if if they decided to get a dot eth you know they're happy with you knowing their name or they're happy with you knowing what they'd like to be called if it's a profile on a website you know they they can choose to put their social media or not but they're not obligated to uh, and that's the information that you've been given on the blockchain you're welcome <laughs> like it shows you their well, wallet think, you can look them up <laughs> and i think we can see by the tools that we all use if you look at the market share of uniswap and metamask or even like any any dex aggregator um, they are, they're pretty much like, that's the tools that we and all pancake, use. Because, and sushi, because like all of them. Decentralized. Are, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we don't, we, like, no one uses trust wallets. Um, no one goes in KYCs, uses BSC. Like no one, I know one I know. There's articles that say they do, but, but the hundreds of people that I talk to, no one's doing those things. Um, it's because we all appreciate the tools that have been built around our privacy. And that, that, that's why we're in this space to begin with. Um, and and what so you the just... more that flourishes, um, like you mean when Uniswap's doing the same amount as coin, Coinbase, and one of them is six months old, one of them is four years and jumped through hoops and now is a banking registered, like banking trans- license transmitter. Um, like that's, I oh know it just goes to show, we don't want that. We want Uniswaps. Yeah. And Uniswap, Uniswap has done so well. I love Uniswap. I've been invested in it for a minute. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of the platform and all the subsidiaries. But um, also speaking about that and speaking about how this space is moving forward and misinformation in the press, um, probably the thing I've seen the most misinformation around, which I've been ranting about quite a bit lately, is the conf- a lot of confusion around proof of work, proof of stake, and people claiming that proof of stake coins, they make big statements about um, how they're 90% more environmentally friendly, 99% more environmentally friendly. And that bothers me both in terms of verbiage and in terms of positioning, because it's not precise and it doesn't make exact sense. Um, but I, do, I personally do believe that there is always going to be a place for proof of work, um, especially in terms of Bitcoin and doing massive transactions. So as somebody who's made a few massive transactions and could probably speak on this more than most people, um, how do you feel about proof of work? Do you feel that it's necessary to keep always? And maybe a better question, how do you feel about proof of stake in the recent boom in like Palm, Matic, Tezos, all of these uh, alt chains that have come up so popularly recently? Um, I would personally say that if you were to ask where the world knowledge, say you had to scan um, a public library of New York and store that somewhere, the Bitcoin's blockchain as a proof of work mechanism is the most secure in my mind. Um, Ethereum's proof of stake has been done before for numerous years by a number of people. Um, it It is better than any legacy product we've got by light years, uh, but it, it isn't better than Bitcoin in my mind. Um, and I mean, if say I had, I don't know, every people that he had ever released and I had the option of storing that on Ethereum or Bitcoin, I would choose Bitcoin's blockchain to do that myself. Um, proof of work, 
is something somewhat new, but it will scale properly. Um, I think over time, but I mean, time is like three to five years, not like 18 months, like people are hoping or like always memeing about Bitcoin and Ethereum and Vitalik being 90 before that's in play. Um, you have to understand if you're building the world's first Oracle, you don't want it to be rushed because a whole bunch of trolls are, are like, you know, mocking you. Um, take a decade to build something that's going to last, you know, for two centuries. Um, that makes sense to me. Um, and like not doing that and rushing things like that is, is idiotic. That's like the Dow was rushed and look what happened. Um, now that, that, that's like, Ethereum's stain on its community for, for life. And that's what maximalists will argue every single time. Um, proof of stake, I think, is it has its own place in here. And I mean, um, the argument on energy was done by a group who pinpointed that because the data was available. If you did one bank in the United States, it would probably dwarf what Bitcoin's doing. Um, and not only that, you put every bank together plus the military um, industrial complex. Try art galleries, nonsense, like. <laughs> states does. It's pretty funny. <laughs> well, if you drive by yeah. a building, if you drive by New York skyline at night, there is no one in 50,000 office buildings, but yet the lights are on with the highest amount of lumens possible. Um, and like that whole system um, is probably a thousand times more than what Bitcoin will ever be in its lifetime. So that argument is kind of idiotic in my mind. Um, and with, with solar coming into play with other options available other than, you know, like non, non I guess, renewable energy, um, it, Bitcoin will become, you know, much more, I guess, environmentally friendly as well. Um, the global warming movement right now, um, I find, is is also somewhat a strange. Um, you've got a government saying, "Pay us," and we're taxing the shit out of you, um, and you're going to supposedly buy or bomb the planet to get back to normal. I don't know how that's going to work, um, but uh, with that kind of coupled um, with the with that thing, I think it was put out either by a banking uh, consortium um, who lobbied someone or someone who was trying to drop the price and then buy in on the low. Um, that's usually what happens. It's fun. Jamie Dimon did it for years. Oh, I think you may have muted yourself. Hey, there we go. Y'all good. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not really sure even how it came about, to be honest, uh, because it's just, it doesn't really make any sense uh, in this respect. Like, how are you comparing two different systems and how much energy they've used when they're in two entirely different systems but doing different things? <laughs> yeah. They are, and it was it was a weird argument because, like, for a while there, you saw wax and ETH got expensive. Wax like come to us, we're cheap. Um, Ethereum goes to L two, and then now what's your what's your marketing against them? Right. Um, we saw Tezo. You know, we're proof of stake. We're more we're environmentally, environmentally friendly. friendly. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? And then yeah. someone else is going to say we're cheaper, we're more environmentally friendly than you are. And then, now what's your draw? Um, so I know it's just those 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 protocols and chains won't survive long term with a marketing play like that. Um, the, you know, Ethereum's never spent a dime on marketing. Um, everyone just uses them because they're the chain of choice. Um, and so they're not expensive. It's the demand on the network that dictates the price of the, the gas. Um, so Ethereum didn't say, I don't want to prove your transaction today. I'm going to charge you $50 in gas. You have 197,000 people waiting for yeah. you right, ahead of you to confirm a transaction. They don't want to use Wax. They don't want to use Tezos. They don't want to use Solano. They want to use Ethereum. And that's why there's hundreds of thousands of people ahead of you waiting to confirm their transaction too. Um, and so Ethereum isn't expensive. It's the most congested, widely used, most in-demand protocol for smart contracts on the planet. And that's why the prices are the way they are. That's not called expensive. That's, that's if you want X to happen, then that's the price to make that happen. Right. It's that you want to buy real estate on, you know, Madison Avenue or in Yorkville versus you want to buy, you know, real estate yeah, yeah. in the middle of a you field. Don't go, it's just, you don't go yell at the homeowner that it's too expensive. You either buy it or you don't buy it. Or you go buy a house somewhere else that you can afford. Exactly. Um, because that, that's your priority. Yeah. And I think exactly what you're saying, there is a place for proof of stake, but people have to, it's not a, it's not an alternate. It's not a, like a, it's not a this or that it's there's, there's certain things that make sense to put on proof of stake. There's certain things that make sense to put on proof of work. Um, and I know I don't want to take up too much time on this conversation, but it is one of my favorites. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts as we're moving forward. And again, as, as Bitcoin becomes more environmentally friendly as it already is, you know, it's way more environmentally friendly than our current financial system. But especially in Canada and other countries, we see getting a lot of the mining rigs from China and other countries that are having issues with regulation. Um, we do see a big push to do geothermal energy, solar energy, wind, you know, wind power, and really try to make uh, sustainable uh, sources of, uh, of money, of power, of energy, etc. Um, how do you feel about the future of Bitcoin and NFTs? And I would love to hear your thoughts on the Lightning Network if that's not going too uh, out of line. Because I know you did say that when, if you could choose to put some of your uh, more expensive pieces on Bitcoin, you would. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on Lightning. Um, and I, I do hope it does um, excel. Uh, with Lightning available now, because the chain itself, um, Layer 1 can't handle that. Um, so with Lightning Solutions, um, 
I mean, it, it will work um, on Lightning. Um, the community and the tools, I guess, have to be there. Um, so I know Crypto Graffiti, um, Crypto Van Brecky, and a couple others only would, would ever mint an NFT on Bitcoin's network. They wouldn't do an Ethereum um, or any other chain for that matter. Um, so there are some NFTs that they will they will never be on Ethereum unless maybe they're wrapped and someone goes out of their way to, to move those. Um, but I myself, if they came up, I would specifically sign up for a Bitcoin wallet and a Bitcoin you know exchange like a platform that we could buy art. Um, and I would I would you know wait in line and and, and bid quite a bit um, to get their NFTs for sure. Um, so there is demand there from people like myself now because everyone's you saw the wave of you know ooh open C and NFTs and then oh Tezos and then Hikinug, um and ooh there's wax and so everyone's like moving around scattering and then people I guess find their way um, you know pick, pick which one they like the best maybe which ones the user is friendly for them um, but if you know if for someone like myself who's kind of deep in the space and like appreciates I don't know, just the, the scarcity and the like the storage and everything else. Um, Bitcoin, I would move my most valuable assets to their system for sure. Um, and I would definitely sign up for sites um, because of certain people that would be drawing me to them that I know I can't buy on other um, platforms. Um, now, having said that, the argument is kind of funny to me because if you're telling people that Ethereum isn't secure, um, you know, it's, Bitcoin is more secure than it. If you're then transferring these valuable NFTs around on a layer two, um, Ethereum is technically almost or just as secure as that layer two solution as a layer one. Um, so that argument is very strange to make to someone like that. Um, so I'm not too sure how their community will um, uptick on this. Um, but I do know that if you look at wrapped BTC, there is, you know, $8 billion or $9 billion of wrapped BTC on Ethereum's network. So there's, you know, there's 9 billions of Bitcoin that the people see more value in holding that as an ETH asset than they do in the Bitcoin. Um, so right there, there is a demand already. People are just using the workaround because there is nothing available directly on that chain. Um, but I do hope it does excel. Um, I think there's room for lots of things and I wanna see these old projects come back to life and thrive and have easy access to buy and sell these things. Um, I think they'll see their day in the light again and they'll supersede the assets we're seeing on Ethereum. Amazing, very well said. And I'm so looking forward to Lightning. I'm trying to set up a node in my house. You know, I want all that jazz. I want to be ready to go whenever that's an option because I totally agree with you. And this is an NFT publication, so we won't go too bits BTC maxi on anybody. But you know, I think you know, I think we've both been in that space for longer than any of the other spaces. So uh, it's something to believe in. Yes. And, and also, like uh, one last thing to say on that maybe is when you look at the issues that we have or people in the space have, insiders have with. Um, a lot of these other chains and the way that they're positioning themselves, it's an issue with the marketing and the PR that they're doing, uh, misconstruing information, like saying that their chain is 90% more environmentally friendly. Like, what is, like, why are you saying that? Bitcoin doesn't, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they don't have a marketing budget. They're not, you know, they're not putting out these press releases. So I think it's a, it's just a different situation, uh, I suppose. Uh, yeah. People yeah, do it for them. Of, um, there's a lot of, like, people calling themselves blockchain companies, you know, digital assets uh, and whatnot. Like, if you look at, I don't know, but personally, Flow in my mind, Flow is the same as Tops Digital. You don't own those. You can't freely buy and sell them, um, move them around wallet to wallet. Um, they're locked in like a BitConnect ecosystem. Um, and things like that, like there should be terms that we use. That's a distributed ledger. That is a you know public ledger of digital assets. Those are not NFTs. Right. Um, like NFTs, like misconstrued a lot as well. It's a buzzword now. People are misusing it every day. Yeah. Well, and then, and then, unless yeah. it's a one of one, it's not an NFT. It's a digital collectible. Um, and even then, it's a tokenized digital collectible, and other ones are tokenized <laughs> digital collectibles in a closed loop system. Um, and so that is the, you know, that like it really, the, the Fortnite um, skin and a Top Shots card are not too far off each other from what they truly are. Um, and that, that needs to change if they're saying they're a blockchain company.